All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how we can get VLOOKUP to return multiple columns. So first of all, let me just show you the problem we're fixing here. So let's say we have this data set with some stock numbers in here. And we also have this other data set that has stock numbers and a few other columns. Now I want to use VLOOKUP to move these other columns to this first table. Now, if you don't already know how to use VLOOKUP, this is probably not the best video to start with. So I have a bunch of videos covering basics of VLOOKUP. But if you already know, you'll see what I'm doing here. So first of all, I'm just going to copy these three columns and move it over to here. And let's start by getting the type. So now to get the type for the first one, I would do equals VLOOKUP, click on the stock number, comma, go to this table, select the table, usually remove the end reference here, Let me get rid of this, press F4 to lock the table, comma, and then the column number for type would be two. So I'm going to do two, and then comma, and then zero or false for exact match, right? So close this and hit enter. So that gives me the type. Now I can just go ahead and drag this down to get it for everything else. Now this one gets me NA, so if we go check this stock number that ends with 423, it's just not in this list. So that's why we get an NA. So we're good that VLOOKUP works. Now if I want to do this for price and cost, I could go here and pretty much just copy this formula, hit escape, go back to this and change this to the three to get the next column over, which is price and drag it down and then do the next column, which is column number three. And then, oh, actually probably four. There it is and drag it down. So that should now return all of these matching columns and it works out. Now the problem with this, if you have 15 columns to return, this is a very mundane task to do to go here and repeat this 15 times. And then if you were to change something in one of these formulas, let's say the range is about to change or something, then I have to go back and change all of these things all over again. So what we can do to avoid this whole thing is using a race. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove all of this from these other columns, go back to this formula. And then in this formula for running shoe, apparently for this stock number, instead of using column number two, I'm just going to go here as a column index, create an array with my curly brackets and do something like two comma three comma four. With this, I'm going to hit enter. Now, remember, if you are in a different locality, you may have to use different separators instead of commas. Maybe for you, it's a semicolon. But if you did figure it out for this part, you'll probably figure it out for this part as well. So I'm going to go ahead right now, hit enter. You'll see nothing happened. I didn't get the price or the cost because it doesn't understand that this is supposed to work as an array because by default, VLOOKUP's third argument is not accepting a race. Now to explain that this is supposed to be an array formula, we're going to wrap this in an array formula function. Now you could do this by simply typing array formula around the whole VLOOKUP, or you can also do command shift enter, and that will put array formula function around VLOOKUP for you. Both ways is fine. You can manually type this or do the shortcut, doesn't matter. But with this change, if I hit enter, See, it spits out the whole array here of all those columns. And then I can drag this formula down and I get all those results using one formula. There's no formula in this other columns. We're just expanding our array with those values. Now, if you didn't want all columns, maybe you only wanted the type and the cost, right? Then you have column number two and column number four. So then you just come here and do this two and four and just drag that formula down. And now we have this. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to remove all of this. Now we can take this whole thing to a whole different level with the right formulas by doing another thing here. So instead of doing array for just the columns we're trying to return, I can also do an array for our lookup value. So currently I'm just searching for this first lookup value. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace that B2 value with this entire column. So for now, I go from B2 through B13. So if I do this, hit enter, see, we get one formula on top that returns this entire array of values for both columns and all rows. Now, if I wanted also to get the price, I'm going to go back and do two, three, four, hit enter. I get all of those. It just works. Now, if I wanted this to work when we add more values going forward here, which it doesn't right now, because in my initial array, I went from B2 through B13. I'm going to go here and drop 13 out of this. I'm going to hit enter. And now it basically goes for the whole column. So if we have more values here, it should just work out automatically. The only thing here, we want to deal with this like NA stuff that happens because now there's no value here. So there are a couple of ways you can deal with this. One way you could just, if you wanted something simple and your tables are not that big, go here and put this whole VLOOKUP inside of if error function, just like this. So now I have VLOOKUP, I have if error, and I have array formula. And if I enter, what's gonna happen? All those NAs are gonna be converted to blanks. And here we go, all of those NAs are blanks. Now if I delete these new rows, it's just gonna clear them. And if I copy and paste this, it works. Now this method is fine, like I said, if you don't have too much data. The problem with this method is because we're using this if error, we have to still search with our VLOOKUP even though there is nothing in the cell. So another way around this instead of using if error here is to just use another if function. So for now, I'm just gonna remove if error out of there, hit enter to just get this back. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just create a separate if function here on the right to show you how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna do if function, and I'm gonna say if this equals to double quotes, meaning blank, comma, then I want to just leave it blank. Otherwise, I'm just gonna click on this value for now. Close parentheses, hit enter, with one formula is gonna work like this. If I drag this down, see if it's blank, it's blank. If it's not blank, it's the stock number. So now I'm gonna convert this to an array formula. Instead of having B2, I'm gonna say B2 through all the way down, and then return will also be B2 through all the way down, something like this. Again, we have to make this work as an array function, so I'm gonna do command shift enter to get array formula wrapper around this, and if I hit enter, you'll see it automatically drops down and it goes until here, and then it's blank. So at this point, what I want, I want this return value not to be the same thing as the stock number. I want this results from this VLOOKUP in case it's not blank, right? So I'm gonna go here and basically just grab that VLOOKUP function, copy it without that array formula wrapper, hit escape, go back here and replace the second argument, B2 through B, paste with that VLOOKUP right there. Hit enter. So now that's our VLOOKUP results. Only now we get nothing in this cases when we're searching for a blank. And we do get NAs in this case for cases when we search and there is no return. So you could now handle it in a different way. So now I'm just gonna replace this formula with this formula. So cut this with Control X or Command X and go here, Control V or Command V to paste it. So here's my final function. That's my VLOOKUP that returns multiple columns from our other table with one array formula to handle this entire situation. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna show you here, what if we have a bunch of columns we need to return here? So I'm just gonna copy paste this a couple of times here. And at this point, if you wanted like all of these columns, you would have to do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So if you had like 40 columns you need returned, then typing this two, three, four, five, six, that might be a little too much to do. So what you could do instead, you could use this function called sequence. So if I just do this, so here we basically give it how many rows we want returned and how many columns we want returned. 
one row. Let me do just three for now so you can see what happens. So what this is going to do is going to generate this one, two, three, because I said I need three columns and one row. So if I did like two, three, now I'm saying two rows, three columns. See, it did like two rows and three columns, and it generates this like one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I just need one row, and let's say I wanted to get six columns, right? So something like this would generate one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I think about my lookup though over here, I don't want to return the first column here. I want to start returning from the second column. So the sequence shouldn't start from one, it should start from two. So what I could do here, if I go back to this, this function has another parameter here where you can give it a start number. So I can go here and do a comma and do a starting two number. So if I do two, see it's gonna go from two through seven. So we said we wanted to get six columns, one row, and start from two as our starting number. If I do five, then it's gonna go five through 10, something like that, right? Now, if I wanted to do something like two through nine, then I'm gonna go here and do two, and then I'm gonna generate eight columns. So that should give me two through nine. There it is. So now I'm gonna grab this sequence, copy that, hit escape, and remove it out of here actually, because it's gonna get on the way of this function and go back here and replace this two, three, four thing that I have here, replace it with this sequence function. So I'm gonna do this, sequence one, eight, two, hit enter, and here we go. We got from two through nine, those columns. So if I go here, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if I wanted to get this one too, then I need to go another one, so I would just go here and replace this eight with nine to create another column. And now if I go back, I should get that column as well. So that's a quick way to do a large sequence of numbers to get them. Now, once in a while, you could also have a situation when you don't want the whole sequence. Maybe what I want to do, I want to do something like two, three, four to get these first three, and then skip a few and then do another sequence going after that. So to do something like this, what I could do, just to get some more space on the right, let me just uh, remove this number of columns. I'll just do one, two, three for the time being, go back here, and I'm gonna create a couple of sequence functions. So the first one, I'm gonna do sequence, and I do one row, and I'll do three columns, and I'll start with two. And that's gonna generate from two through four, right? And then I'll do another sequence function here. And again, one row and whatever number of columns I'm gonna get after that, let's say I need three as well for this one, but for this one, I wanna start from column number six. So I'll do six and then it gives me six, seven, eight. So now I need to combine this. I need something that's gonna be two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So to do this, I'm just gonna have to combine these two things together. And to do that, I'll grab this second sequence function without equal sign, go back here and create an array right here, put this sequence function comma and paste my next sequence function after that and close this array. Hit enter and now I got my two through eight. So this is my first sequence here combined with my second sequence over here in one formula. If I delete this, this should still be here, which means now I can grab this, copy that. I'm gonna delete this formula out of here, go back to my VLOOKUP and replace my old sequence function with my new combined sequence function. And if I hit enter, now I got two, three, four, and six, seven, eight, or whatever the column numbers were. So this way you can generate some sequences and place it in here so you don't have to manually type. So if you have a lot of columns, this makes sense. If you have a few columns, you probably just wanna comma separate your columns. And that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.